beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see that it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed and stay blessed I cannot. Why? For it is sealed. Next verse. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. That means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned cannot help themselves. No matter what earthly advantage you have, there are dimensions where it is only the Spirit of God. Chapter 32 and verse 8 of Job. Elihu was speaking. He says, but there is a spirit. Not in heaven. In man. There is a spirit in man. And the inspiration. The word there is breath. Breath. It doesn't just mean motivation. The breath. There is no motivation that gives illumination. It takes the breathing of the spirit. Can give men understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 2 that all these spirits when they rest upon you go to verse 3 they are all for one purpose and he shall make him of quick understanding that means there is timing matters in your knowing the things of God of quick understanding of quick understanding of quick understanding lift your voice and say lord light my candle light my candle neither do men light a lamp that's the secret not neither do men have a lamp neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel light my candle oh god light my candle open my eyes to see hallelujah job chapter 29 We're going to on shortly. Job was a very, very strange man. We're reading from verse 1 to 4. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, We're reading to 4. But that I were in the months past, in the days when God prayed me. Uh huh. When his candle shined upon my head now think just don't rush when his what candle shined upon my head that god will shine a candle upon a man's head and when by his light 
not my light by his light thy word O lord is a lamp to my feet a light to my path when by his light i walk through darkness for as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle this was the basis of his results the lord shined his candle upon my head then the Lord used his light and said, walk through your darkness. Use my light. And then he kept his secrets on my tabernacle. Like you go to your library and you find a book called The Secrets of God. You can now begin to read all the exploits that happen. Light. Secrets. Light. Secrets. Light. Let me tell you the truth. There are things that are not public. God must come to you and show you. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me show you something and then we'll sit down. Ephesians chapter 1. Mighty God of heaven. from verse 8 wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he may gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in the earth, all in him. He says, in whom we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Yeah, this is it. Please, let's go to chapter 3 just came to my spirit and I thought to share it with us. Verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, meaning for your sake, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote aforetime in few words whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ now the verse that I've been looking for is in verse 5 read with me please one to read which in other ages that means that there are truths that in other ages were not known it says as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it is not every mystery we share now that was known in time past the holy spirit has not stopped revealing just like he has not stopped creation the bible says in revelations there were times john saw some things he says seal it close this one it is not for this time one prayer the mystery for this season oh god let me see it the secret of the lord that makes for exploits in this season not just in time past what the spirit is saying saying which in time past was not known But in these last days hath he revealed to us by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The mystery for the season, O God. Hallelujah. 
Please be seated. God bless you. Let's pay attention. We'll rise up and pray just to exhort our hearts. When Jesus began to teach about the Holy Spirit, among the many things, please settle down, among the many things he said, the Holy Spirit will show you things to come, not just things that are happening. That means you will own the future by having access, knowledge and light of the things that will be useful in the future. The Holy Spirit, he will show you not just that he would take things that are mine. That is already spectacular. But he says he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Things to come. Let me tell you the things that God is, the knowledge that he's bringing. Please listen. These are not necessarily the things that will only benefit us now. They are the keys and the patterns that will give us access to the future. Praise the Lord. Father, we bless you and we pray that the entrance of your word will give light and will give understanding to the simple in the name of Jesus. I pray like never before that what I'm about to share and exhort us on that finally someone will get this thing and that in the name of Jesus Christ as you get it, you will rise like an edifice unhindered. You know your time has come, not just by the prophecy that comes. You know your time has come. The light comes to you. When light does not come, no matter who prophesies, your time has not come. You will rise and shine, not because of prophecy. Prophecy informs you so you can receive your faith. You can release your faith to receive that which is meant for you. But it's going to take light to hallelujah the law of honor this is one of the deepest spiritual mysteries it is one of the most powerful spiritual laws i know second only to the law of encounter no matter what laws you know in the spirit if you do not know this you will never rise the law of honor. Pay attention, we'll listen, and then we'll pray. Teach us your ways, O oh God. Make our lives easy by the wisdom that comes in knowing your ways. In the name of Jesus, take away struggles, take away hardship from our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very powerful. I will continue to teach us again and again that this kingdom is a kingdom of mysteries. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We don't reign just by goodwill. Don't reign just by good intention. Having a sincere desire is not enough to reign. Just being a kind and a nice person is not even enough to reign. There are many kind and wonderful people who are victims of situations and circumstances. It will take light. Everybody say light. You see, let me tell you this. As God reveals these principles, don't just write them on a jotter. Write them upon the tablet of your heart. That if they ask you tomorrow, what are the secrets of the kingdom you know, you can bring them out. I may not know this and this, but by God's grace, I know this one and I know this one. They are irrefutable principles backed up by God's own integrity. There is no man, there is no policy, there is no civilization that will change or corrupt the immutability of these truths. It is true. Believe me when I tell you, and God has granted me access by his grace to certain mysteries and principles. Of all of them, I will continue to tell you, second only to the law of encounter, this is the greatest in terms of value. The laws are all powerful and they have their place, but they are not equally powerful. Hallelujah. The law of honor the mystery behind very strange open doors the mystery behind 
the unstoppable lifting and the rising of people the mystery that can in one day end captivity this is the mother that gives birth to favor favor is at the mercy of this knowledge hallelujah two scriptures one first samuel chapter 2 please and verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 and 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me i will lightly esteem that means trivialize this is god speaking them that honor me i will honor but they that despise me i will likely esteem the kingdom works based on seed time and harvest that means that there is always a seed every result that we obtain in the kingdom can be likened to a harvest please understand what i'm teaching you i want you to get this law that it is and right when you call every result that you obtain in the kingdom a harvest whether it is healing whether it is deliverance whether it is prosperity whether it is fresh grace activation of the gifts of the spirit whatever dimension it can be called a harvest and that for every harvest there is a seed everybody say seed please say it again seed the bible tells us in genesis chapter 8 and verse 22 when a read an offering that was well pleasing unto god the lord came and made certain vows backed up by his own integrity and he says as far as the earth remains he says seed time and harvest then he lists all the others shall not cease that means for every harvest you desire you start your journey to actualizing that harvest by knowing what seed produces it are we together now not every seed produces everything there are seeds and harvests that are allocated for those seeds are we together now very very important for instance attention and listening is the seed for learning if you want to learn a harvest knowledge the seed that you sow is your attention my son pay attention not just listen pay attention so attention is a seed and that when you pay attention to anything the harvest that comes is that you will learn about it are we together knowledge in itself is a seed for change or transformation you are not transformed by desire you are not changed just by intention it will take not for any change and any transformation to happen there are seeds very very important time is the seed for destiny there is no destiny without time please listen when God wants to give you a destiny he gives you a seed of time the way you sow that time will determine the kind of destiny that you will have that a man's destiny is a multiplication of the seeds of the time are you seeing why time is important that whatever tries to fight your time is not really really fighting your time is fighting your destiny because your time is the seed for your destiny appearance for instance is not only the seed for acceptance it is the seed for perception appearance does not just talk about the clothes you wear alone appearance 
is the seed for acceptance it is also the seed for perception that means i am at liberty to perceive things about your life based on your appearance if i see a mecca with a white um lab coat and apron and a stethoscope i can perceive that based on that appearance i can't call him a carpenter that is not the appearance of a carpenter are we together now that means that if i can change your perception by changing my appearance it's very very powerful i'm showing you seeds and the harvest that come words words are the seeds that carve intentions and thoughts words you use words to paint an intention from you to someone that means if i want to transfer what is in my heart to you the seed i will sow is words if i don't speak right i can create a harvest in you that was not what i intended i'm showing you how these things play are we together now battle is the seed for territory every time you want the harvest of a territory the seed you sow is battle there is no access to a territory without battle are we together friendship is the seed for relationship that he who wants friends must first show himself you must sow that seed of friendship this is very 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 powerful prayer and fasting are the seeds for both personal and corporate revival it's, it's all through scripture that every time you really want to see revival no matter what else you add to the table if there is no prayer and fasting you just added fertilizers without a seed the seed for revival both personal and corporate is prayer and fasting honor is the seed for access please write it down honor don't assume you have heard what I've said. Don't assume I've taught it so many times. Just listen very carefully. Honor is the seed for access. That means dishonor is also a seed. And there is a harvest that dishonor brings. Dishonor is the key to barriers. The harvest that dishonor brings is a barrier on your way. This is powerful. Because many of the breakthroughs we seek in life will come at the instance of the access that we have and i'm teaching you that in the realm of the spirit that every time there is a limitation standing before you then there is a dimension of this law that you must engage otherwise you will remain there if you're with me say amen all failures can be traced to dishonor all without exception All failures in your life and my life can be traced to dishonor. A threefold dimension of dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to spiritual principles. All failure can be directly traced to dishonor. Dishonor to God, dishonor to men, dishonor to principles. Are we together? What then is honor? Please write this down. Generally, honor talks of esteem, esteeming a person or a thing. But let me give you a definition that I've used and I've found very valuable. Honor is the discerning. Please write. The discerning. True honor starts from discernment. The celebration and the rewarding of excellence of usefulness of value honor is the discerning 
the celebration, the rewarding of excellence from the word excel, of usefulness and of value. That means that you have, please come, you have the fortitude to honor first to the degree to which you can discern. It's a spiritual perception that you must have. The ability to discern value. The ability to discern excellence. The word excellence means the fortitude to surpass standards. Are we together now? The ability to discern the use of a person or a thing either to your life or a system is called honor. Please listen very carefully. That means dishonor on the other hand means trivializing importance. Dishonor means trivializing value, trivializing usefulness, trivializing a system, a principle, a person. Please write this. I'm so glad that we're learning this even as we prepare for the business session tomorrow. I believe it's going to be a very powerful time. Please pay attention. Listen. Dishonor means to take things or people for granted. Dishonor means to lightly esteem. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20, the Bible tells us there are certain vessels that are unto dishonor. That are unto dishonor. They are vessels but they are unto or for dishonor. That means a vessel unto honor or a vessel unto dishonor. Is someone learning something here? It is the key to all kinds of access. The moment a door closes, the key that opens it will be honor to God or honor to to men or honor to principles or a combination of all of them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very, very powerful. And I'm teaching this because many people in our generation do not know that the reason why a person can mark time at a realm spiritually, in ministry, in business, in family, and so on and so forth. Because of one word, dishonor. Dishonor is such a serious thing to God and honor is such a serious thing that the entire Old Testament was a system of creating honor. Listen very carefully, believers. I preached a message years ago called Commanding Results. And that was the first time I began to talk about honor. And I have watched this Lord change people's lives. I've watched it change my own life. And I want you to hold on to this law tonight like a ladder. And let me see the devil that will stop you from rising. Honor. Very, very powerful. The Bible lets us know that honor is required for success. Honor is required for for any and every level of lifting, whether it's spiritual, listen please, whether it is intellectual and all of that. When a student sits down in class to listen to a teacher, that attention is honor. The student sits down, he starts by discerning that this man standing before me, even if a student is at a higher level, are we together now? That this man standing before me has paid the price to accumulate the knowledge needed to lift me beyond my position. And so the student further demonstrates his honor by placing value on what the lecturer is saying. Now, being out, many information may escape his mind. He will write them down and follow it through. That is honor. Are we together now? This is very, very powerful because many believers do not know honor. They do not understand honor. Violate spiritual systems here and there. And we continue to become victims, although well-meaning.
Nebuchadnezzar dishonored God and God taught him a lesson that his sovereign power cannot be shared with any man. He turned him to a beast and for seven years his life was miserable. Are we together now? It's very, very important. There are all kinds of things happening in the body of Christ and I can tell you the reason why many ministries, many businesses, many destinies, many individuals, some of our well-meaning parents never had the opportunity to rise. One word, dishonor. This law also states that anything you dishonor will diminish in your life. Anything, God, man, knowledge, money, anything you dishonor will begin to fade and erode out of your life. And anything you consistently honor will begin to magnify in your life. It's true. We have dishonored men and women of God around the world. Members have dishonored their pastors and their leaders. Husbands have dishonored their wives. Wives dishonored their husbands. Please listen. Students have dishonored lecturers. Lecturers dishonored students. We have dishonored men. We have dishonored God. We have dishonored laws. The laws that make for success. Isn't it amazing the way people believe that they will make impact and have no regard for laws? They just hope and think that their lives will magically evolve into the will of God. Either because they have good intentions or they think that they are not evil. No. Everything is built by laws. If it must last, it is built by laws. A spiritual life is built by laws. Prosperity is built by laws. Impact and influence is built by laws. Evil is built by laws. Grace of God, the lavish disposition of the grace of God upon a man's life is built by laws. Sustainability of anything is done by laws. And if you do not know the laws that are allocated for having access to the hearts of men, the hearts of kings, especially in this season, then you may not rise to certain levels. Hallelujah. Dishonor is not only bad. Dishonor is sin. You have to understand this. We are not just talking about a concept that is positive or negative. Dishonor is sin that has real consequences. We live in a world where the success and the sacrifices of many can be trivialized within a heartbeat. We don't have regard for the sacrifice spiritually and otherwise of people. I will tell you why people never rise. Because we have not trained ourselves to discern difference. To know that there is a difference between a failure and a success. They are not the same. It's not an insult. It's not being sarcastic. There is a difference between being anointed and not being anointed. There is a difference between being graced and not being graced. It's a difference between being knowledgeable and ignorant. There is a difference between being old and young. There is a difference between being responsible and irresponsible. There is a difference between being spiritual and unspiritual. Do you know this? If you cannot discern it, then you will not know who and what is deserving of honor. Are we together now? This mic is doing something first to my life and then to all of us. Are we together now? My honor to this mic will be to keep the systems that will keep it amplified. Are we together now? If I off this mic, I cannot pretend to not feel the effect. It will do something to me. I may shout, but my voice will pay for it. So honor is the ability to know the difference between using a mic and not using a mic. You must know the effect on your life. 
there is a difference between living in the favor of God and living outside the favor of God. You cannot say it. No. There is a difference between obtaining help from God and running your life by your strength and by yourself. Those who have known have pieced together the principles and regardless of what men say let me tell you my brothers and my sisters learn this that i teach you tonight and watch the self-imposed prophecies of people fall to the ground even without saying any prayer on it the immutability of god's counsel backed up by his own name there is no failure for a man who understands this law if you ever see failure in a vision, it remains there in the vision. The laws of God will manipulate his life till he succeeds. Honor. One powerful law. This is why many men of God never rise. This is why many ministries never rise. It's not that they don't have revelation. They have many other things, but there's no honor. There are many things that will never rise. They have not trained themselves to know the difference between a good working family and a family that is not working there are many people who will never be rich and wealthy because they have not discerned that there is a difference between a wealthy man and someone who is not wealthy many times we call the sacrifices of people luck or chance listen carefully when you see a young man anointed vibrant with fire and grace you just say this guy was lucky maybe he just met a man of god and hands were laid on him that perception that inability to see that people do not just rise by default you don't see a house built and you say wow the wings just put blocks together and added what what creativity from the wind no there are things that are too intentional to be a mistake are you getting what i'm saying now there are certain results that have gone past the realm of guesswork there is a level of excellence. There is a level of intention. There are certain levels of anointing that a man can possess that is no longer guesswork. You have to know what you are doing to get there. It's impossible to get there hoping. No, it's like Olympic or boxing. You fight somebody on the street and have an advantage, but you can't go to the ring and fight someone and convince yourself that all things are possible there is an art to winning in the ring there may not be arts to winning on the street but if you enter a boxing ring the person will tell you there are courses you take you understand anatomy the entire anatomy and physiology to know the parts you can punch and the effects that they create so he looks at you and you are already dead because he has seen all the loopholes and yet you just think he's looking with the eyes of a layman until he gives you punch then you will know that there is a difference between a boxer and a man it's amazing how many people look at successful people and sometimes they are even afraid for them ah, i hope he will not fail are you joking do you think success is that cheap success is built on absolutely intentional laws no great ministry is built just by intention please listen listen there is no great family as any good father mother and well-behaved children there is a level of family result that it cannot be locked When you come from a family that is tied into witchcraft and all of that, there is a level of result that if you attain, there are things that you have dealt with. It's impossible to cross a certain threshold being under captivity. Everybody say, oh no. My assignment is to train your eyes, to train your spirit, to know that everything is not the same. God is not the same as a shrine. So when you say choose between God and one shrine in your village, you don't have honor. It's dishonor. That perception, when they kept God, the ark, and they kept Dagon, 
God's jealousy made the difference clear immediately. It's not the issue of God. There's no point to prove. You are still God. There's a point to prove. He made sure Dagon fell head on. There are times in life that there are points to prove. There are really points to prove. Is God helping us? Right now, there are people here who have traveled from so far. You have come because of one word, honor. You call it hunger, but it is still honor. Are we together now? Reverend Daniels and his dear wife, let's, let's bless God for them. I mean, I was, I was in Eboi. They are based in Enugu, great ministry work there. I usually go to minister there. It was them together with some pastors that put the meeting in Eboi. It was such a great, phenomenal meeting. And as soon as they were done, I returned back and I was surprised to see these people still here. It's called honor. The discernment that there can be more. You don't just act like that. You think first, do I need this level? Is it really important? With this level or without it, is there an effect in my life? There are things you must think about. If I'm poor or rich, will it create an effect? If your mind says you don't have honor because you to think that being wealthy and being poor, any one of them can go, it's a sign that you are oppressed. Because the Bible, listen, I'm not just talking about money. I'm opening your eyes to something. So if a young man remains at a level spiritually and you don't contend for higher levels of grace and the anointing, it is because you have not honored the relevance of that dimension of grace. You have not perceived that to be greatly anointed is higher than being anointed. How God anointed Jesus, not just that he was anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. So contend for the anointing with an open heart is because you have discerned that the anointing is like money. It is the amount you have that will determine what you can buy. The grace of God upon your life will only solve the problems that are below it. Any challenge that is higher than that grace, you will not be able to purchase those spiritual realities. So the tension for spiritual growth is proof that you are honoring the anointing of the spirit at that level many of you are participating in this this prayer and fast now regardless of the inconvenience many people have been under all kinds of inconvenience yet you endure the name of what you are doing is honor because you know that after seven days you are going to carry something something that no devil will be able to stop and you weighed your convenience you weighed several things and you said the sacrifice was worth it It is honor that will make someone in need of a politician's help sit at his reception from 6 a.m. in the morning and the man says, I'm sorry, I can't see you now. Can you be patient? I'm, I'm traveling, but I'll come back by night. He says, no problem. And he sits down there for more than 13 hours. And the man returns, ah, your excellency, sir, you are back. Because he knows that no matter how long I wait, it's cheaper than suffering. No matter how long I wait in that place, one favor from that man can change my life. A that foolish man will say, what is there? What is there? And you will go back to recycle your pain once again. We apologize for the inconvenience. There's, there's wind blowing, especially for those outside. Everybody say honor. It is honor that teaches you that an elderly person is not the same as a young person. That no matter how knowledgeable you are, there is an advantage that time and age can provide to men. Are we together now? The Shunammite woman saw Elisha passing every time. Elisha was not the only one who was passing every time. But the Bible says she perceived that guy. Mm -mm. There is this. The fact that he was always passing meant that he was always under. He was hearing God all the time and going to execute instructions. And she perceived that this man's coming into my house can provide an advantage. And she said, I will not just tell him come to my house. I will prepare for his coming. So she, she kept watching him. Every time she would see him carrying a book, 
she didn't ask him what do you like books do you she kept perceiving and she went and prepared she simulated an environment that will suit him and say sir you are welcome and the man said all right madam you have brought me let me tell you what you brought what is your problem she said i don't have any i live among my people is to tell you the level to which she has shelved that case of having a child Elisha said, no, you don't bring this kind of grace and your life remains the same. It's an insult to the sacrifice that brought this anointing. I paid the price and I went to Gilgal. I went down to John. I got a double portion. I can't enter your house. You honored me and then I walk out. And then your gate man too enters and walks out. And then anybody, and what then is the difference of the sacrifice? I'm not one of the sons of the prophet. I follow through to the end. Madam, the, the, the grace is crying for him. Give it an assignment. He said, no, 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 no. I'm an influential woman. I love my people. And then he said, I will create one by myself. And the servant said, she doesn't have a child. He said, that's it. Notice she didn't ask for a child. She didn't pray for a child. She only honored. And the honor found what problem it will solve by itself. There is a realm of honor that you get to that you will have to open your mouth and pray some things. Everybody kept lamenting about the hunger in Samaria. Ah, Samaria were in trouble. I said, you too, you felt the hunger. Baby. They said, yes. And out of all the people who were crying, the women and all the people, they noticed that two people were unaffected by that famine. The king and a strange man, he was not crying for bread. As if he was not a citizen there. And then when they put there, a whole nation is suffering and the solution is in the pocket of one man. Yet he didn't pray. He just kept moving his thing around the city. Dishonor kept closing the door until someone provoked that grace, provoked that anointing. And he said, all right, by this time tomorrow, he didn't say, let me go and pray, and then I will see the cloud. He said, by time. He didn't say, oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I stand as your servant and I call on heaven. He said, me, I make it happen. By this time tomorrow, let the gates of a nation be open. Your Bible. Honor is powerful. When you honor God, there are things God will do to you that all men will know is only God that can do this. God will do some things and sign his signature like Julius Berger will build and write B so that you will know the difference. So you don't confuse it and think someone else built it. God will build your life and write his name on it. So that when anyone looks at you and says, last year were you not like this? Say yes. It's not. I didn't build myself. I was built by an architect. You honor men you have access to their heart and with their heart will come their influence their credibility their resources you put pressure on everything they are and you will leverage on their credibility to rise let me tell you your your journey will be hard in life if you do not know how to honor men all men are not the same Are we together? Someone I know won an election. And as soon as the person won an election, she that works with him just called me and said, he started jumping. Why was the person jumping? He didn't participate. He didn't do anything yet. Already, they've not sworn in that one, but he started jumping. Ah, God has buttered our bread. Because when you honor a man and have access to his heart, you don't have to rise. He just has to rise and you will follow him. Honor, it will open doors for you that will surprise you. It will accelerate your life beyond your imagination. Please sit down, sit down. Let me show you four, when I was studying this, it struck my heart and the Lord put it in my heart to show you.
I'm going to show you four cases in the Bible where honor or dishonor played a role. And let's see what happened. Number one, just four, there are so many, and then I'll give you the, and we'll pray. Someone's life is changing. I know this. I know this. Listen, this is one of the laws that you will see the result immediately. There are some laws that you may see the result later. This one, you can start seeing it from this night. Genesis chapter 9, from verse 20. This was the issue of Noah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Noah and his sons. It says, and Noah began to be a husbandman. And he planted a vineyard. We are reading to 27. And he drank of the wine and was drunken and covered within his tent. Now, there are all kinds of theological debates about this as to what this really meant. It's, it's not, it's not the, 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 the revelation of the context is not what I'm, I'm really interested in. I want to show you something. And next verse. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told it to his two without. 23. And Shem and Jack took a garment, listen carefully, and laid it on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. 24. And Noah awoke from wine and knew he was sleeping. He was not told, though. He woke up and knew that his younger son, he knew what had done to him, 25. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren, 26. And he said, Remember, he didn't know who did what. And he didn't say, All of you come. Who saw the nakedness and who covered it? That means Noah was not anointed. A man that built an ark that all the animals entered. Is that an ordinary man? Notice how the Bible does not even talk about vineyard and the wine again. It just focuses on the curse and the blessing. He wakes up from his sleep and just knows that many things happened while he was sleeping. The same way you can look at your father and say, my useless father, if only this man went to school. And while you are saying it, he's sleeping. But there are laws. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. These are laws and ordinary. None of the sons, he didn't call an assembly and say, okay, tell me what happened. And he said, daddy, this is what happened. No, he got up and then he said, blessed be the Lord God of Shem and Enan shall be his servant. 27. God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. End of discussion. What was the offense? Dishonor. Someone dishonored Noah. Another person honored Noah. Two of them instantly got rewards for it. I told you honor is a seed. It's a seed that grows fast like a weed. Number two. Hmm. Now this one, you have a lot to learn here. Genesis chapter 16. Ah, the Lord opened my eyes to see something there. Genesis chapter 16. This is the story of Sarah and Hagar. Please look up and learn something powerful here. And now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bear him no child. Notice that all these stories start with something that looks like a problem. And then in the midst of it, the problem is forgotten. And then the context of honor or dishonor is the discussion. And he said, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar, verse 2. And Sarah said unto him, behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my handmaid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. Now you have to study in Jewish practice to know. This was not anything unusual at those times. Your brother's wife could bear children for you and maids and all of that. So, And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Verse 3. Notice. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt 10 years and so on and so forth, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Verse 4. And he went into Hagar and she conceived. 
And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Notice the story. This was a girl that was brought and then he said, Todd, since I'm not able to give you a child, let me not be too selfish. That is because of me, based on that tradition now. Here is my housemate, have a child with her. And at the moment the lady noticed she was pregnant, something happened. Next verse. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon me. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Watch this. The Lord judged between me and thee. Next verse. But Abraham said to Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do with her as it pleased thee. And Sarai dealt hardly with her. She fled from her face. Now get ready to learn the lesson. And the angel of the Lord, so Sarah drove Hagar now. Are you getting the story now? And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of shore. Eight. And he said, listen, Hagar, Sarah's maid, when comest thou, what did the angel call her? Sarah's maid. We know the protocol even from the spirit. Just because you have a child, I will call you by that ordinance. You are still Sarah's maid. Your lifting was connected to Sarah. And even though you have left, the realm of the spirit still recognizes that this lifting was tied Sarah. It says, Whence camest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. Look at this. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, what did he say? Return to thy mistress and submit yourself under her hands. In other words, madam, there's no hope for your situation. Honor has closed the door, not even me. My recommendation is go back. Let that submission be in place. Otherwise, I'm meeting you here, I will see go like that. This is Bible. Return to your mistress and submit yourself to her last verse <laughs> and the angel of the lord said unto her i will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude go back every other thing is still tied to that go back and submit yourself look at this kind of story a woman is running away and an angel meets her and she's complaining that this wicked and the bible testifies that sarah truly dealt with her hardly he would have said, go and tell Sarah, you saw me. I, the angel of the Lord, has said she should mind herself. And he says, go back to your mistress. I'm showing you very deep spirituality. You will now know why Elisha received the mantle. Number three. Numbers chapter 12. Follow me, believers. And let's grow in the spirit. Numbers chapter 12. This involved relatives now. Relatives. Relatives. Because dishonor happens a lot with family. And so, relatives. And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the utopian, the word utopian means black woman, whom he had married. For he had married an utopian woman. Verse 2. And they said, had the Lord, now they now digress and started saying, does God speak to Moses alone? Had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? And had he not also spoken by us? I hope you know Miriam is a prophetess. That means she was hearing God and Aaron was a priest too. So they are saying, why, I mean, Moses, what are you saying? I am a prophetess and this guy is a priest. Us too here and there, we are hearing God. And the Lord had it. And the Lord had it. What conversation? Two of them were talking, you know. And while they were talking, God said, let me see what I'm saying. And the Lord had it. Next verse. Now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Verse 4. And the Lord spake suddenly to Moses. Hey. God comes to hear something and goes back and says, Moses, come. 
something is about to happen to two of your relatives now let me inform you so that you don't beg me i'm the one who is going to do it now god knew what moses can do and he knows if moses talks he will interrupt the process he's collecting permission from moses to deal with certain people here and moses and unto aaron and miriam come out ye three to the tabernacle of the congregation and three of them came out of them here god remember so now verify that they all hear God because God called three of them and all of them had. Next verse. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam and they both came forward. And, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known to him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Seven my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house one day I will explain to you what God just said next verse with him I will speak mouth to mouth that look look you people receive visions and dreams but I've left that realm with Moses I don't just I come to him my level of relationship with Moses is that I come to him and speak from my mouth to his mouth and not in dark speeches and in similitudes of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against, not me, my servant Moses. Next verse. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he left. Next verse. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold, Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous 11 next verse and Aaron said unto Moses alas my lord the adjustment happened immediately I don't know what I called you before but after seeing this class alas my lord I beseech thee was this not what Haman did to Esther when it was imminent that he was going to die I wish thee lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. I told you dishonor is a sin. Next verse. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed and when he cometh out of his mother's womb. 13. And Moses. You see why God came to Moses before? And Moses now said, God, oh yeah, come, come, I've, I've looked at this. And Moses cried unto the Lord saying, heal her now. Oh God, I beseech thee. Look at a man talking with God. Oh, not oh God, heal her now. God is okay. Don't. 14. And the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? He says, Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be sieved in again. Last verse. Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not until Miriam was brought in again. You can continue. She later recovered. But I'm saying just because a man that God loved, the jealousy of God came down. Dishonor. The same way you can honor a man in secret. He's not even aware and God will also hear it and see it and God will arise and deposit something upon your life are you getting blessed very powerful the last scripture and then I'll show you certain keys second Kings chapter 2 second Kings chapter 2 from verse 3 Elisha was in, in the heat of the anointing, the portion anointing that just rested on him. Now, this one now had to do with children. Sometimes, Ba, is really, really strange. This is children. And he went forth from thence on to Bethel. And as he was going by the way, there came forth what? Little children. Should they not be spared? Little children. There came forth little children out of the city and mocked him, saying, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. 24. And he turned back 
and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two shares out of the wood and tear forty and two of them. He cursed them in whose name? Is it not the same God that said the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, but rich in love? Small children, what an adult, no problem. These are little children, they are learning. And yet he turns to them and curses them in the name of the Lord. And bears come out and injure and children. Think how many things honor can do in your life and how many things dishonor can do in your life. Dishonor to the law of giving alone has kept a lot of people poor. Dishonor to productivity has kept a lot of people seeing visions of wealth that will never actualize. Let me tell you this. Please listen. And this is a message to the body of Christ. There is a growing trend of many young, vibrant ministers, especially apostles and prophets, all around the nation of Africa and the world, who because of civilization and the context of our understanding today, are consistently violating this, calling the name of every man of God, tearing men of God down in the name of, I know this, I know that, destroying all kinds of people. Let me tell you, the laws of God are irrefutable. It's only a matter of time. You will see grave consequences. The people I pity are the children of these people, not even them. They are endangering their children, not knowing. And some of you here have been victims of it. You stand, whether on social media, whether whatever, tear down anybody, insult anybody. You see a rich man getting private jet, you write nonsense online. Stupid criminals, we are coming for you. You see a man anointed and the next thing you are saying something really nasty. How are we sure it's the power of God? And while that is happening, God is hearing. He's bringing down, because the covenant of that man with God has a voice. It's an altar that is maintained by sacrifice. Please listen very carefully. I'm teaching you powerful spiritual principles. Many shop owners have insulted everybody succeeding as though it's the reason why they are not succeeding and their shop started down. And notice that the more they pray, the more it goes down because that trouble didn't come from Satan. So there is nothing to cast there. I've seen men of God who went down and their voices almost never heard again because of the level, the pungency of their criticizing all kinds of people. Today, everybody right now is an analyst of the body of Christ, analyzing what is happening, analyzing who is anointed, analyzing this and that is dangerous. Listen to me. Listen to me. These are spiritual principles. Nobody rose up just like that. It's the same way they criticize William Branham. Just because things went bad at the end of his and all of that, people would tear down, people had written all kinds of books and his grace is not speaking around the body of Christ because of that pungency. Listen very carefully. Those who may not have crowd will tear down anybody says the issue of crowd. What is their membership? Sometimes those things come from a standpoint of sarcasm. And God, who is the one who brings men, is hearing. And then we secretly go back and we say, God, must we remain like this? And God says, me, I'm the force behind this lack of growth. How many unemployed people will see someone and say, what are you doing now? You say, I'm working in one school. You say, ah, you. It's better to have been making a kuno and zobo to sell. You mean you are right there. You see that? You think it's a joke. But God is hearing that you have never submitted your CV and gotten a job. And someone without submitting his CV, he got a job. I agree that he's getting 4,000. But because we have learned dishonor. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Our lives, we continue to web our lives with all kinds of strings of dishonor. There are people who have refused to rise because of this one reason. Dishonor. Honor is the key to access. 
and they never access grace they never access wisdom there are many wealthy people in this city for instance and there are not many people who have gone to sit down and say i came to visit you sir is there one or two things you can teach me say no everybody's a thief everybody's an arm robber and they continue to re-impart upon themselves that level forever please listen to what i'm teaching you those who have understood this have risen in ways that you cannot imagine happy are you when god carries the heart of a man and gives to you that god connects you huh to the heart of a man through honor is somebody learning something so when you master honor when you learn honor you will see doors opening by themselves there are men of god who were invited to certain places once and will never go back there again because they did not understand the principle of honor to these systems when they took advantage of anything and just tore everybody down there are some of you who come to the houses of great people and you destroy your opportunity for connection forever you come to a house and you cross your leg you put it on a chair and you just balance and the next thing uh, what, what would you like? Uh, I don't take too much pepper. What exactly do you have? Let me know what you have. And the person who is, for is just an example, the person who is talking is poor and doesn't have any open door. Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you this. If doors refuse to open, I am telling you this. It is dishonor that has kept it closed. I never see any man or woman that is worthy of honor and will not communicate the honor that is due because I know the consequence. There are many people in this city who would have been long healed by now. There are many people who would have been long delivered by now. But this honor is the gate and the padlock the devil used to keep them in their situations forever. You can pray, you can fast, but there are certain realms you cannot enter except through honor. Honor is the seed for access. The Lord by honor and by heat has taken me to places today that I know there is no reason and there is no other way I would have gotten there. What honor can do is powerful. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. You will step into prepared blessings when you understand honor. honor to god honor to men honor to principles i'm not teaching you human worship now let me tell you this and, and let me balance it very quickly it is foolish and stupid of any great man especially a man of god when people show you honor and you take them for granted any wise person who knows god and has value for life will not take you for granted when you honor them what i'm saying now yes There are things people do to me that I'm, if I have my way, I will beg them and say, please, don't, don't even, please. I'm okay. I know you honor me from your heart. The Lord bless you. Let's leave it like that. But that you dishonor men and you want to rise, every realm you dishonor, you've exempted yourself from entering that realm. Whether it's financially, whether it's spiritually or otherwise. See, listen, this is why you find out that you continue to dishonor people and secretly try to enter that realm. And there is a resistance that no prayer will take away. Apostle, you don't know what my father did to me. My, my father is not a nice man. You don't know what my mother did. These people left me. I would have died. I would have gone into prostitution. I paid school fees by myself. Now they think that I should come and bless them. Listen, let me tell you. They may not have gotten it well, but it is no license for dishonor. They may do everything wrong, but one day they will do something right. Pay for that one day. Because the blessing you will get the day they get it right will follow you transgenerationally hallelujah i pay attention there are ministries that honor me so much and honor me truly 
and i have seen the effect when i teach and share god's word in those places i see the result i know that the honor is sincere and you will see that those people receive those people rise those people grow that's why in many churches it is us that come and receive most members had leave you know why because they know the pastor they know the elder maybe he's even their biological father so when he's preaching and he says everybody stretch what your hands you just laugh and say daddy you will soon be hungry now he's, i'm the one who prepares your meal and then god will hear you how many wives dishonor their husbands because they're already married sam cop they think that just because they are married they dishonor when they get married they do all kinds of things nice two weeks after the marriage the man is just one one item i am joined with forever and god is hearing because the possibilities and the grace of that man will speak to every other person except the wife the same thing with the woman men will get married to women and think they are just rags the bible says submit come and do this whereas the man is not prayerful and that lady came as the reason even god told you that she's the reason why you are succeeding then the day you annoy her everything fails you go to god and god says like he told hagar go back you may not submit to the woman but you must submit to that possibility if you want a revival of that dimension are you getting what i'm saying now this is true i am a product of what honor can do i am a product of what honor can do i am a product of what honor can do listen you will not be able to dig every well by yourself no matter how hard working you are your lifetime is too small to dig those wells there are wells that have already been dug those wells like jacob's well will last generations use honor as a fetcher to draw and draw again enough to feed you and feed a generation jesus went to a city and could not do mighty miracles what simple is this not the carpenter's son but there was a blind man when he was passing jericho for the last time he says thou son of david have mercy he didn't say can you have mercy mm -mm. i know you have it have mercy you you won't pass me have mercy and jesus said what should i do for you that i may regain my sight and his eyes open I continue to search for dishonor around my life so that I will correct it very fast I tell you any door that is closed there's something there is an element of dishonor that may be there if you are sincere why oh God am I surrounded by anointed people and I can never carry real grace dishonor why am I surrounded by wealthy people and I continue to remain poor dishonor why am I surrounded by wise people and I continue to be foolish again and again why am I surrounded by people who are on fire and there's no revelation they give you any scripture you can't say anything about it notice the gate men of men of God notice the chefs they don't have any revelation as if all they came to do was to cook can't you see the visitors that you are cooking for their lives have been changed and you continue to serve the food and receive tips whereas one day you say sir this chef i'm 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 is, is passion but i need results i've served your food now but i need something are you getting what i'm saying when i meet extremely great people i don't waste that time i don't sit down and say and sometimes ah my apostle great man and great this i just find a forum where we're alone and find a seat and say sir i decide i don't just say pray for me that's a stupid approach that's not honor you will never receive anything that way you must discern i know the difference between you and me the results show it i am not there yet simple and straightforward and i beckon on whatever grace that brought this result and with a passionate heart they will release everybody that has something knows it and they know when it leaves them to you 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This ministry is enjoying the blessings of the body of Christ because of the honor of the body of Christ. I say this with all blessings. We don't have a YouTube channel as it were. I don't know if the media has that. But there is almost no message you will type and you will not find. Someone took it as a responsibility without payment. It is because a son was sown. And so it was sown to the body. And the harvest also came from the body. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? When it was time to, for the sick here this morning, many of you came and you watched a Benihim video first. It doesn't mean I'm not anointed to pray for you. But I know from whence, you see, let me tell you, a river that forgets its source, truly speaking, you will dry up. It's a matter of time. You will dry up to nonsense and, and not know where you came from again. Our proud generation continues to have results for a while and then it will disappear. Because the moment you have results, most times people don't know the difference again. Somebody trained you in business. Now you have become a millionaire and you come to meet the person in the shop. Bros, how are you there? You are an apprentice there. And you come with your G-Wagon and smile. You have a G-Wagon, I have a G-Wagon. Don't harass me. I just came back from Italy. That's a foolish man. One day you will not know the explanation why things will go down. And you will go to God and he will give you the recommendation of Hagar. Go back. You are a great man, but in the realm of the spirit, you are still Sarah's maid. The law of honor. The law of honor. I shared with you my story that I wanted to go to the U.S. to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter as a man of God. Not to go for a conference. Not to say, just to let you know that there is a young man all the way from Nigeria. He's by the name Joshua Selman. He's my humble self. Is that humility? I was going to scrub the toilet. Not to go as a man of God. Oh, I would have gladly scrubbed that toilet. Lord, whatever grace will make a man to raise hundred wheelchairs in one meeting, laugh at it. Whatever grace, this is the law of honor. Many people don't know how to receive miracles. When I talk like this, you would think it's arrogance. If I get up in the morning with my eyes blind, by 6 p.m., that eyes must have been opened. The desperation to receive is not there. Many people are too ashamed to really receive. The woman with the issue of blood said, get out of my way. I'm the one who knows what I'm suffering. Shift, let me touch the hem of his garment. And the people were trying to embarrass her. Said, no, please, let me touch the hem of his garment. And she was healed. Don't violate this ordinance. Let me give you a few keys. Our time is gone. We should pray. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will value this that I shared with you. And you will watch how easy life can be. Keys to honor. One, wisdom. There cannot be honor until there is wisdom. You need a deposit of deep stone. To manifest honor wisdom to know the protocol of greatness Vashti was a foolish woman for one reason she lacked wisdom it was her wisdom that culminated to dishonor that made her pay the price there is no record of Vashti going back to beg the king she forgot she was only queen because she married the king are we together no wisdom the king called on her to his chamber to come and flaunt the glory and she said no i have my own agenda and the elders came and said king do something about this woman if not other women will start doing the same thing and the king said vashti you are gone 
when sarah came study the book of sarah and see honor personified what most people see there is favor you are seeing the child look at the mother look at how the pregnancy started until the child called favor was born she meets the king on hearing that a wicked man called her man wants to destroy the people of god and the king said esther what do you want to half of my kingdom she said nothing oh king would you grant me the honor of hosting you to a banquet he said that is it is there any problem she said no yet there was an emergency lives were about to be she knew that in dealing with greatness timing matters not every time is the time you can just see your destiny help and say anything for the boys immediately he planned to give you a job because of that he will vow that your children's children will not get a job timing there are many people as soon as you see a great man the next thing you come sir uh, anything for us sir whereas the man was about to ask you young man what do you do we are looking for a secretary is it all right if we send you to our dubai office and you foolishly come with mediocrity and say sir you are looking as if i'm not sorry but will you go like that you see stop that every time you see a great man your first element is not to beg listen to me and learn many young people continue to mess up you want one thousand they will give you one thousand yet you have lost access to their hearts are we together esther now tells the king let me host you he said all right let me come and try and esther prepared a permit me to use the word a wicked banquet when the king ate this she came again he said now i'm ready is there any request say no sir just grant me the privilege of doing this again and then another time she now said now i want it to be a feast of wine you know wine is a spirit in the bible she's about to make a request and she's making a request against the closest friend of the king what if the king says you want me to fight my friend i will kill you she knew the timing there was something that needed to happen for him because her man was his right hand man so when the king took the wine he was filled with that wine and he sat down and then she came what do you want esther and she said oh king there is a man who that wants to destroy me your one and only queen and my womb he said who is that he said that is the man that stands by your side wise king he left and went to a garden he didn't answer yet he left and went to the garden because the word of a king is a law and he said let me think first let me not talk foolishly will this decision be honorable many times silence is proof of wisdom you don't have to be under pressure to answer everything is god helping someone today two sweep it do it again by the second day do it again by the third day very soon somebody will call you and say why are you doing this he said well i i plan to have this kind of thing i'm a responsible person i have learned on i just feel i should do this every great man knows greatness when it, even if it is in infancy they will look and say mm -mm, you they won't make you a manager they'll say okay keep sweeping a wise man will not call you immediately he will test the sincerity of your honor he will say continue doing it just to know you are not a thief that's all and then he says watch this person and for six months you will sweep with nobody saying thank you but on the seventh day of ah, you know how bible talks you will come to sweep and see a car with a key and a letter inside open me say ah, i won't do this so i'm not a thief and you open it and that's the prayer request of someone for 10 years there is a key to every territory it's called honor you are sandwiched between people who are greater than you and people who you are greater than if you keep receiving honor from those who are greater than everybody will reach your level and leave you 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 have to keep rising too while you bring others up are you getting what i'm telling you yes there is no program that is done in this ministry that i will not sow into it this ministry is a blessed ministry but even at that i must look for something and sow into it principles 
when your prayer life goes down is dishonor because it's proof that you are trying to show God you are the Lord of your own life and he's watching you get up in the morning you yawn your way through a life you return back by the mercy of God and you will not understand that he kept you you will continue on till the day keke almost capsizes you and then you remember the scripture it is vain to wake up early and sleep night only to eat the bread of sorrow but it is God that gives men sleep and rest he will return back and say God I don't know what entered me but I'm back oh no we are going to pray wisdom number two let me rush it I apologize for taking our time this night the second key to honor is forbearance you cannot practice honor if all you have is forgiveness forbearance is a deeper dimension forbearance means it will happen again so you wire it into your system of honor that this person i honor is a noise maker i don't like noise but i have to prepare my mind to hear noise all the it's called forbearance adaptation is proof of honor the greater one will not be the one to be flexible and adjust to you you are the one who will have to stretch yourself are we together forbearance many of you cannot forbear great people let me give you a very big secret great people are difficult people the complexity around the systems that work in their life will not only need wisdom it will need forbearance there are many yes as you have to say without knowing what you are doing forbearance i'm not a fool i can't continue to do a mumu in this office i'm fighting for my rights and they say open the gate for him please leave this place after two months you find out that you had one stream of income coming by the mercy of god and an erratic dishonor of five minutes is costing your children's school fees forbearance everybody say forbearance a lot of Pentecostals have lost graces in the Orthodox circle because they don't have the forbearance. You go to an Anglican church and there's a long hymn. You check how many verse stanzas. Six. And the man leading will tell you when we get to verse five, we'll sing it again. He's enjoying what he's saying. And you are, you are sad. You are, you are nauseated. You are angry. You are already offended. You're off by everything, the chants and all of that. Whereas there was a grace there for you to get. To forbear. To forbear. To forbear is not to forgive. To forbear is to wire yourself to update everything. Number three. The third key to honor is to pray for those you seek to receive from. You don't pray for a man you seek to receive from, you will not get anything. Let me tell you. Many people don't pray for those who they seek to receive from. Pray. Just by praying for them alone, Job 42 and verse 10, you pray for those who have gotten, the friends of Job were not oppressed. He was wealthier and greater than them, but with respect to his predicament, they had become greater than him. And he had to submit to honor them by investing prayer. Job 42 and verse 10. He says, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends, not himself. Number four. Genuinely celebrate those you honor. Not eye service. Not, ah, bless God for Papa Oyedeko. Bless God for Papa Ia Deboe. And then you go to one godless discussion of three or four people he said don't mind all these fathers of faith i'm so disappointed I, I i hate them more it's just that if you say it now they will beat you so that's the real truth i really hate them but it's just that outside let me honor them no like noah they may be asleep but they are still seeing and they are still hearing and they will wake up and know who said what and who didn't say what sight happens whether you are asleep or awake paul was blind for three days yet he was seeing visions celebrate celebrate a ministry that is blessing you celebrate it a life that is blessing you celebrate that life genuinely celebrate them finally 
love the last key to genuine honor is love you cannot honor a man a principle a system and even the god that you do not love 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 i love the body of christ i love koinonia i love the workers i love the leaders from the depth of my heart and it has nothing to do with selfishness i wish we had time i wish we had time i wish we had time do you know the bible says listen carefully all that i've said about honor suggests to higher authorities but that's only one dimension of honor because you also have to honor people prophetically who are about to rise you don't just honor those who have risen they have plateaued and you have seen it but there are people who are about to rise you will need discernment 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 many of us will dishonor everybody lower than you and everybody who cannot give you anything sam what do you have to offer nothing I, please you are not worth my honor emeka you are a doctor i i need injection because i don't know where my leg is like i don't I, I honor you wonderful except for the fact that you have registered your exit from sam's life before he rises the moment he rises he rises with you he has noted you that you qualify for exit from his life so the secret therefore and the jackpot is to honor all men because god is the lifter of men my brothers and my sisters you can you see me or little children here they come and match my cloth and sometimes the protocol wants to stop them i say leave it to this debt they are matching they will buy the soap tomorrow they have the ability there are many of you who cannot play with children there are men who you, you, you can dishonor and oppress anybody lower than you. Once anybody is higher than you, you can lie down and roll on the ground. But when there is anybody who doesn't have anything as a yet to give to you, you destroy them. You are making a big mistake. The key to owning the future is to honor those who God is lifting for the future. And Jimmy will say it this way, find a man who is rising and in that life listen let me tell you this you know there are many people who believe that just because they knew you and they were connected it means they are stakeholders no connection is not enough to be a stakeholder it must translate from a connection to an event relationships that are investments are the relationships that are worth maintaining an ordinary connection is not worth it an investment of time of resources imagine the people that knew you they don't know what god is doing in your life now they are looking at the you of five years and there is nothing comely there except for the fact that it will be like the twinkling of an eye one day they will be following on facebook and say ah, who is this you as though they ask god not to lift you and then you suddenly rise and you watch the way they casually and shamelessly call you it is so 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 and so call me back quickly no the person you want to call is not there again this is a newer version if your relationship was not an investment that could grow then it didn't yield anything are you getting what i'm saying the easiest way to prosper is through relationships but relationship as an investment not a connection this is already a preview of tomorrow relationship as an investment not a connection this is what reverend dan and his wife are doing these are general overseers they left a boy and they left a nubu not only to come and receive let me tell you it's not every time you need to receive there are times that you have to invest whether you are comfortable or not politicians know this business people know this someone will leave kenya and leave south africa to come for the birthday party of a two-year-old baby what has the baby done for him what of the hand that holds the baby that's where his paycheck comes from are we together so the woman 
with the alabaster box, discern that this man will one day be the king of kings. And I have a terrible life. What can I do to edge my relationship in this man's life? And she took a, 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 a what do they call it? A box, spike nut, a and she did something she knew it would not be easy for any other person to do. She smashed it at his feet and used her hair. And Jesus said, anytime you are talking about me and the gospel, you must make reference to this woman. When we get to heaven, you will know that you will not just from connections to investments you send a text may God bless you daddy may God bless you mommy they don't reply continue an investment you do returns immediately but it's working the day they are looking for good people to bless your sacrifice is too much you to be ignored hallelujah there are several men of God that is difficult for me to tell them no even when my schedules are already booked, if they do come, I will try to tell them, find a way. Even if it's a weekday, let's squeeze. Even if it's one day, no problem. Let me honor them. Because of what they have done. There are people when I see their missed calls, provided I have the time, even if it's two minutes, I can even squeeze and just send a text and say, I'm sorry. I may not be able to talk to you now, but I'll reply you. All the debt it forces you to pay back. We are gathered here for seven days and if God does not change our lives, you can activate this system. Try it this night. Write down the five or ten people in your life that are most deserving of your honor and write down the top ten people in who make you a big deal. Anybody that makes you a big deal, don't trivialize them. Because the whole world does not have that level of honor. If you make me a big deal, I will invest into your life. Make God a big deal and see what he does to you. Is somebody learning now? Yes. When you find anybody in your life that thinks you are somewhat celebrating and makes you a big deal, be wise enough to separate them. And let me tell you this. Never give people access beyond their last level of honor. Don't make your life that cheap. As you give people access, watch for the honor that follows. If the closer they get, the more the honor goes down. Stop there. Stop from the last place of honor and remain there. God is the one who prescribed this. What you do in my parlor may qualify you for my kitchen. May qualify you for my bedroom then may qualify you to my safe. You don't come from the gates. There are visitors that you look through the pigeonhole and say, why are you here? Say, I just need help. You squeeze 1,000 and say, please go. It's not, it's not insult. It's the level of relationship. There are others you can open the gate and say, okay, what is it? You say, can't we get a shade? You have not. That shade you see has a, a dimension. There are others you say you are welcome. There are others you say you are welcome as far as you want believe that everybody has the same access listen to me anybody that dishonors you don't fight them but peg them at the last place of honor and keep it there until there is a reason to transit and some of them sadly sadly may be people in ministry people in whatever kind of thing refuse that Is someone learning this otherwise you would destroy yourself somebody will come and meet you and say give me a business advice 
you gave him a business advice yesterday and the person trivialized it made nonsense out of it when he was teaching it he didn't give credit and honor to you and felt it was not an issue then he says give me another one he said no no let your honor qualify you for the next access when you find people who the closer they come to you the higher the honor treasure them they are an endangered species the world does not have many of such people these are kingdom secrets my brothers and my sisters you should share the grace tonight knowing that a real key was given to you go to your office tomorrow and you see people who are undeserving of your honor and you will see the mistakes you have been making you told people secrets about your life secrets about your family secrets about your destiny secrets about certain things and they have no fortitude for honor everybody say honor oh, this is a powerful law powerful law to the degree to which you honor god he will bring you into his inner chambers he will say come let me show you the things you will not hear in a congregation come my son let me show you my ways these are the secrets of the lord that are with them that fear him and he will show you not his principles his covenants There are many of us we would have received certain things from our parents and our loved ones but sadly some of them went to the grave with secrets they never told you because this honor made it difficult to get it across to you if this is all you know you have found something that can make you great god loves everybody but not everybody is his friend read your bible he didn't say you all are my friends mm -mm. i died for you yes you are my children yes i'm your lord yes but there are people he says you are my friend moses come to talk with you how are you today and he talks back to him he came in the cool of the day to talk to adam and talk to eve when this honor happened he said that's it going to pray this night lord i found the key i found the key this is the kind of meeting that afterwards you will send your pastors tonight and say pastor sir let me teach you how to honor in one minute many of you don't know how to honor god bless you for me sir it's not honor there are many people who have blessed my life just to let you know you are one of them that's foolishness that's not honor the goal of honor is to show someone that you perceive their uniqueness and the extent of their impact so you are going to within the context of the honor isolate them and give them an experience that will make you remain desirable in their eyes hallelujah that's our confidence you have won the victory that's why we make our boast all day long hallelujah he's won it all for you you have won it all for me sing it one more time with faith in your heart hallelujah, hallelujah. When you desire a miracle, when you desire a breakthrough in your life, the first way into that miracle is an encounter with the word of God. Every true miracle, every true breakthrough, every true blessing begins with an encounter. Listen to me, please. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. You've been suffering for too long. Pay attention. 
pay attention and get out of this thing. There is a way out. Others are testifying. You are the only one who is left. Pay attention and get out of this thing once and for all. There is a way of escape. There is a way of escape. The Bible says the labor of the fool weary every one of, of them because they do not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. There is. There is. Your prayer point is already somebody's testimony. It means God is able. Hallelujah. If God has changed SS to AA and you are here seated with SS, is, is it such a big deal? Is it such a big deal? Or a job? Beyond your wildest imagination. So pay attention. An encounter with the word of God is the starting point of any miracle. And now I, I will explain to you. When we talk of an encounter with the word of God, we are not just saying you read your Bible because you've been reading it for a long time. We're not just talking of um, reading your Bible and, and looking at it. Wow, I found this. No, an encounter means something happens to you. There is a light that leaves that word. The ministry of the word of God is the first way out of any predicament in life. Please get me. The ministry of the word of God. There are some of us here right now. We are trusting God for jobs. And I know that if all of a sudden I announce now, and I say our daddy prof is in this place, there are some of our, our fathers scattered around, great influential men, our fathers, our mothers, people who with one call can give you a job. I say all those who want jobs, come and stand here. You greet daddy. Many of you will already be jumping. You say, my God bless Koinonia. But, but do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know that I told you about the Illuminati and the secret societies, right? By the privileged position of being called into an apostolic ministry, it affords me the opportunity to study other religions and study a lot of false activities of darkness. Not necessarily to pervert my faith, but so that I can bring the body of Christ into accuracy. Look up, please. Don't let any man fool you. I was teaching someone today. I think it was Pastor Femi. Listen. Every one successful person who has been empowered by the devil. Please listen to me. Everybody who has been empowered by the devil. Had an encounter with something that represented it. Are you getting my point? I shared with you about the 2,300 ancient manuscript that they found that it had magical powers upon it. That if you only took that book and just read the title alone, fortunes will begin to follow you. There are people on earth today with those evidences. Those secret societies recruit people. They select people specially every year. And it's by divination they select them. So when they select you, they get across to you. You will not know how, but they will call you. They'll say, you have hereby been invited. Your life is about to change. They don't ask you whether you believe them or not. They give you access to read some of those materials. You step out immediately and you will see calls coming, alerts coming, opportunities. Look at me. If you ever think prosperity is just about job or business, you are joking. There is a spiritual agency that makes things work in the natural. Are you getting what I'm saying? This, this, is what, this is what I've been crying about for years that the body of Christ gets. It's not just about physical things. There is a spiritual factor that makes things work. Is somebody learning something? An encounter with the word releases something. People just read a book, right? And something comes upon them they cannot explain. All of a sudden, they come out and you are drawn to withdraw money and give them. Just like that. All of a sudden, you stand up and begin to advocate their case. What, what sort of life is that? Look, they 
that know their God, they are the ones who will be strong. It's not about age. Listen, it's not, it's not even entirely just about education. And I have a great deal for academia and, and all of that. But let me tell you. There is a reality that predates our existence. And if you do not know it, you will be a victim in this life. Psalm 82 from verse 5. The Bible says, they know not, neither will they understand. I have spent my life studying the laws of the spirit. I have literally committed my life to explore these ancient mysteries. What was the secret of ancient men? What made them mighty? What made them great? And I found out that every mighty man, then and now, stands upon a spiritual advantage. There is a pedestal in the spirit that sponsors their audacity. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You don't just tell somebody be healed and he gets healed. Brothers and sisters, human beings are not idiots. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I can't just look at this lady and say your story will change and then it changes. Come on. I prophesy as I was commanded. I prophesy as I was commanded. See, this is the dynamics of miracles. I'm explaining to you the inner workings of the miraculous. It happens because all that you see is not all that there is. This realm is a three-dimensional realm, physics tells us, and is limited. The realm of the spirit has other dimensions, meaning there are other possibilities beyond the scope of our intellect. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. This is the realm of wisdom that kings reign by. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. He said, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Tonight is not just for you to receive a miracle, but to empower you. That when you make a statement, there is an understanding that forces that statement to come to pass. Hallelujah. When you talk to people about finances, the first idea that comes to their mind is business. Is that not true? What business? Okay, real estate. Okay, stocks. Okay, this and that. I've said it again and again. Again and again. That I don't care what business you do or what job you are having. You will struggle forever until there is a spiritual factor that is at work. Are you getting me? Yes. The Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One. He said that unction can teach you. Isaiah 48 from verse 17. It says, I am the Lord thy God that teacheth thee to profit and lead you in the way that you should go. There is an anointing. This heat and run trial and error life must end tonight. We can walk circumspectly on the strength. Listen, you can be 70 years old and have an error about life for that long. Are you getting me? A whole nation can be wrong. Our society, we transfer knowledge upon the strength of what we know or what we have been told. When man ran away from God, he said, Adam, where are thou? Genesis 3. He says, the Lord had the talking spirit, the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? Meaning your life is a summation of the informations you have gotten and you have believed. But could it be that what you have held as truth all your life may not necessarily be accurate. Taught by well-meaning people. There is the life of the kingdom and there is the life of this world system, cosmos. We are not the same. It says you are in the world, but you are not of the world. There is a plane of reality you must function from. Hallelujah. So number one, an encounter with the world. You need an encounter with the world. The word of God does three things, among many other things. Please write, number one. The word of God shows you the basis upon which you will receive any promise. The word of God 
shows you the basis. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Everybody say legal realm. So you don't just, you can play crooks in the earth realm here, but not in the realm of the spirit. Everything is done legally and legitimately. If you ever see anything manifest itself, certain laws were applied. Praise the Lord. So the word of God shows you the basis. Remember in our, our series, uh, the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I teach about the spiritual dimension of life. That there are gates on every mountain. Everybody say there are gates on every mountain. When you get to that mountain of breakthrough, there are gates. It will not just open because you are a Christian. When Jesus in Psalm 24 was about to come out from the grave, the Bible says there were gates. The psalmist saw it. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be lifted, O ye ancient doors. Did they open? No, sir. They asked a question. Who is this king of glory? Give us the basis of your audacity. Upon what are you standing? And he says, he is the Lord, strong and mighty. The one who just defeated darkness. And the gates opened. So when you stand to receive the miracle, Oh God, change my story from SS to AA. There will be a question in the spirit. Upon what strength? That's the parable that Jesus was giving. The parable, right, of two men who built houses. One upon sand, the other upon a rock. Two houses were built, but what supported them became the distinguishing factor. Praise the Lord. The basis. It's important for you to know the basis. Let me tell you very straight and uh, in, a, in a way that does not require any confusion. Everybody writes, the finished work of Christ. This is the basis. This is the reason. It is the one master factor. The finished work of Christ. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Many of us need to meditate on what he really did for us. Do you know that it is on the strength of what happened on the cross? The way, access, the veil has been torn and it's given us access. Access. Revelations 5. Revelations 5. Verse 9. Very quickly, please let's hurry up so that we can do much tonight. Revelations 5. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. It says, For thou wast slain and you have redeemed us unto God. How? By thy blood. That's the basis. The substitutionary work of Christ. I told you, you can get our teaching, the speaking blood. I told you, blood is a key in the spirit. Is that true? Blood is a key in the spirit. Everybody's blood can open certain doors, but not every door. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will, he will calculate by divination and tell you the kind of blood that will open the gate you want. So the blood of Jesus is the greatest because it is the master key. There is no door that it cannot open. It says, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, verse 10, He says, and has made us unto our God kings and priests. And as a result, we shall reign. Everybody say dominion. He has given us access to dominion. Access to dominion. Praise the Lord. So when you study the word of God, it gives you the basis. So when you stand and say, I'm tired of this cancer. Or I'm tired of this barrenness. It's been five years have not been able to take in. The realm of the spirit will ask you, so upon what now do you believe you will take in? And you tell them there is a key that has opened that door. There is a key. The blood of the eternal covenant. Hallelujah. Everybody say the blood of Jesus is my access 
to my inheritance. One more time, say the blood of Jesus is my access to my inheritance. You're not just saying it after me, you are confessing. Say the blood of Jesus is my access to my inheritance. Hallelujah. That's the reason why you will get married. That's the reason why the devil must leave tonight. That's the reason why the genotype must change. That's the reason why every prophetic word that comes upon you must produce result. That's the reason why as many of you standing outside, although you are far, but the ministry of that blood can still speak. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Not just because preachers said the blood is powerful. I have a revelation of the significance of the blood. Revelation is powerful. It produces true faith in your spirit. So that you are not believing blindly. You are believing upon the strength of an understanding. So the blood of Jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs. And when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell, you don't stand weak and you are wondering and say, do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier? You say, well, I couldn't cross it, but that blood created a divide and I must walk past it. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me show you something. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah. Isaiah, help me Holy Spirit. Isaiah 41, verse 21. I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you. Justify your qualification to step into a new level. You don't say that just by jacking yourself. You lift up the blood. And say, this is my basis. This is my basis. Upon the strength of what your son did. He has given me access to hell. He has given me access to the blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Number two. An encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and and transformation somebody come please look for that scripture for me with god all things are possible right somebody come anybody watch this an encounter with the word of god remember i told you in our teaching yes um last week right the reality of what spiritual laws i told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must walk with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset, right? He says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts, my ways. Is that true? So this is God standing. And he's saying, come and join me. But she's standing here and saying, Lord, I need you to. And God is saying, it's against the law. You have to find, come, I supply grace. You take advantage of that grace and come. When we are together, so the Bible says, with God. Come, with God. All things become possible. So, without God, nothing becomes possible. 
So that cancer with God becomes possible. You see that? Are you getting my point? That admission with God. The Bible says with God. So koinonia miracle service with God will produce result. The, 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 this is the mystery. This is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. But when the word of God begins to judge you, it shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here with certain terminal diseases and they have been told. They've lived all their lives believing. They didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed. They came for something else. Right? Because according to their mind, it has not yet become a possibility that God can address that issue. But when he looked at the tomb where Lazarus had been buried, he said, roll away the stone. Proof that I can raise Lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed. Praise the Lord. I believe God. I'm a believer. I truly believe him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says, lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, not some. He didn't say, talk to him. He says, acknowledge him. You acknowledge a man by giving him preference. He says, and as a result, he will direct your path. Next verse says, be not wise in your own understanding. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from him. Hallelujah. Very important. So, with God, this lady may be weak, unable to do anything. Aya, aya, aya. But with she may be broke, suffering, nothing is working. But all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that with older more than his meat and tends to poverty. She begins to learn the ways of God that he can open up the heavens. That it is the blessing of the Lord, not your business. It is the blessing. The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So, with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden, doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God. Listen to me. Tonight, the first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say Lord I'm tired because your life is a reflection of your ideologies I don't care what the situation is I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what your belief system and your ideology he said let this mind Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind the word let there is permit permit this mind please I know that you came from Kaduna State. And Kaduna State, there may be a way you thought about in your village. I know that you came from, from the East. And there is a way that they thought. I know that you come from the West. I know that you come from Katsina. Tonight, will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom? By adopting the ideologies of the king. Subscribe to a new government. Every government has an economic system. Every government has a political system. Every government has a welfare system. If you've been evil, 
know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father? But that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The word of God brings you into alignment. Listen. When I begin to study the word of God, or when she begins to study the word of God, and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of God, you will be foolish to argue with the word of God. The word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming, this is Koinonia. Get the series. Hallelujah. There, there is a lot of creation. Genesis 1. Uh, Isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created. Praise the Lord. The question I'm asking you is, I know you want God to bless you, but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village? It's the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yazar, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ, and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So, we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa. We have been taught that until you are 25 or 30, don't think about finances, don't think about blessing, don't think about empowerment. And you are told that you are too young to carry the power of God. Or you are a lady. You shouldn't carry the power of God. These are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us. But you must refuse it. Say I refuse. Shout it. I refuse. I refuse. Mm. You must refuse it. You must refuse it. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? I honor the doctors. But do you know that there are many people who who have several sicknesses but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it. You went to check headache. They said, my brother, this thing is more than headache. Well, I, you mean you would have died now? We have a lot of doctors here. Doctors, I love you. Praise the Lord. But now when you check and they tell you, huh, do you know that your liver is almost, in fact, you say, you, you mean it? Hi! From that time, your liver starts paining you physically. Right? And then the doctor tells you, you have two weeks to live. All of a sudden. Somebody says, there's an opportunity. God is lifting us. They let me lift you there. I'm dying. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. See, listen. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. There is a spiritual agency for sight. You only see through these physical eyes. It's not what you see with. They are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see. And Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light. Praise the Lord. So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people Pray for them, lay hands on them, do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai, a, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation. And bring Baal, make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as He is. I refuse to limit you. I refuse. Number three. The word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you 
your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of your, the land. Not if ye be hungry and desperate. If ye be what? Willing. There is a condition. There is a condition. There are always conditions. So an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of God's prosperity package. Lord, you want to bless me. What is my role? Right? I want to step into levels of the anointing. The word of God shows me. Is, see, reading the word is like walking in your promised land. It says, walk left and right. See everything as far as your eyes have seen. So, you read, studying the word of God is like touring your promised land. And you come back and say, Lord, as I read, I found this and that. And God says, all right, here's the condition. Everything is yours for a take. You can enter a restaurant. Immediately you enter the restaurant, you see a lap of an agri chicken and you start smiling. But you came there with 100 naira. There is a condition. You want to be a possessor. You want to make that thing become a present reality. There is a price tag. Nobody stops you. There's no policeman to stop you. But you can watch it like a museum. And salivate. And watch. Right? And nothing happens. You may be 30 years. But a little baby will come with his father. And he say, mommy, I like this. And whatever he likes, keep giving it to him. The container did not refuse to open. Your part. I know you are laughing because I spoke about food, but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food. Praise God. Oh God, change my story. God says, come let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. Are, you have died for me. Open it. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis. You have, you have always every power challenging me. You better leave. Because of what? Why should they leave? Do you know what brought them in the first place? They were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. And that's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years, that man was lying down at a pool. That wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38. Oh yeah, let me allow you. You have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes. Five minutes. Meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow. You are wasting your time. Arise and shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. Isaiah 64. Thy light is come. Hmm. Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here. What you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are prayed. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I heard Reinhard Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it. Until I found out that blood was a key in the spirit. That's why every religion has blood as part of their company. This is the one factor that every religion agrees upon. Blood. Hallelujah. And there are some of us here, the problem is our mindset. 
God wants to bless us. He wants to lift us, but there is a mindset. Oh, I'm a lady. Oh, I'm coming from so, so, and so. I cannot even speak English. Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Oh, I made that and that. Huh? Or, God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You're asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle, or the second platform now, first is an encounter with the word of God. Second is the ministry of prayer. The ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle. There must be the ministry of prayer. It does two things. Number one, prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life. Ephesians 6 verse 12. The Bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world. We have strangers who are trying to escort us every day, every time. Wicked spirits stratified in different cadres. Right? So you are always not alone. The devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life. And given the opportunity, he will wreck your life. The goal to mock the testimony of God in your life. Praise the Lord. So there are giants on every mountain. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are giants on every mountain. If you get into a mountain and the door is already open, somebody already killed the giants, but there were giants there. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The stratification of the demonic kingdom. So between you and your breakthrough, there are giants. It takes the ministry of prayer. Hallelujah. When you pray, you authorize heaven to look into your situation. Because God is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to. Genesis 1.26 From the day he said, let them have dominion. But God is supposed to know now, doesn't he love me? Well, it will not change. The bones kept staring at Ezekiel until something happened. Praise the Lord. You come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this, there are still people seated, oppressed of demons. Right? Some of these demons are hearing what I'm saying now. They are just shaking, but they are not going yet. Let's see if we will go. Must we really go? Yes. By the time we begin to pray, we activate the energy, the force. Right? It's a force of compliance. It brings everything to the obedience of Christ. So that's why you need to pray. You pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow. Number two. This is an even greater reason why we pray. Prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation. Please never forget this. When you pray... In the place of prayer, God reveals to you his unique strategy for you. So, you have walked through scripture and you have seen that God has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough. But now, the Bible may not give you the nitty gritty of what to do in your unique situation. Prayer. When you begin to pray, the spirit of God begins to search the mind of God concerning your situation. And the Bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of God. So you begin to pray. 
and then the Lord tells you, okay, now this is the strategy. You are going to meet Benga. Benga will introduce you to Femi. And Femi will introduce you to Prof. That's how the miracle will come. It is a strategy for only you. Somebody will do it and fail. Are you seeing why prayer is powerful? This is, this is, am I blessing you? In my opinion, I think this is already a miracle for somebody. I'm showing you the loopholes. Some of us have seen the promise. You have agreed with God. But the problem is the strategy. In ancient times, kings won war not on the strength of their army, but the dexterity of their strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategy. So Joshua stood still and God began to give him the strategy. He said, Joshua, this is how we throw this wall down. Walk around seven times. Did you ever see that repeated in the Bible? Because it was a strategy. Right? He told Gideon, take the people by the riverside and let them take water. Study the way they take water. You will use it as a separation. Strategy. Somebody has come tonight to receive strategy. Lord, how do I complete this house? You calculated your salary. Based on your salary, you take 10 years. And God says, I can show you a strategy. The Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it, and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that have been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It, it's all about strategy, I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense, but it's his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail, but it's what you will do. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh -uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him, but he needed a strategy. Right? That's why every time kings would fight, they would go and inquire, what is the strategy for this war? They will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war. They will fail woefully. And so they will go, should I pursue? And the Lord will say, this is how it will happen. Like in the days of Jehoshaphat. Put worshippers in front. Other times he said, walk around seven times. Other times he said, just be still. Get a stone and sit down and watch what I will do. Strategy. Question. The strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. Just like that. The Bible says, as they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate me Paul and Barnabas. If they were to choose, they would have carried somebody else. Right now, when we begin to pray, I am convinced that God will begin to reveal strategies for people. Hmm. Strategies on how to make the rain work. Some of you, listen, students, there are students here that all you need is one strategy. There is a course, everybody has told you this course, and you are face to face with that Goliath. You've been running away, but right, you are there now. You need a strategy. Hallelujah. There are some of you, maybe your project, a supervisor may be difficult, and God can give you a strategy. The strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit. It can be light. A one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying. Oh God, what do I do about this, my supervisor? Suddenly a scripture comes. The gift of a man makes room. You quickly go and package wine. Not to bribe the man. You are responding to a strategy. Ordinarily, he would have thrown you out with your wine. But because you are doing it as a strategy laugh and say why did you have to do that what is even your name you have been disturbing me it's a strategy hmm. Lord, give me a strategy you will see men do foolish things that don't make sense that's what God told us when when we wanted to start giving access to our messages I went to the Lord and the Lord told me he said make sure you do not sell any message keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right 
you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you will but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave me and this is the mystery behind what you see i like you as you are seated before we stand up to pray in one minute speak to the lord what is the strategy lord my family has been struggling over this issue for years every time they want to build there is no money what is the strategy please take what i'm saying seriously one strategy can change your situation not just a strategy you read from a book one strategy there is an easier way of doing it that you have not seen it does not mean it's not there why we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal in 24 hours by the strategy of the spirit he gave victory please pray God has shown you your destiny helper but he's not paying attention to you one strategy will answer the question pray God has shown you the business he wants you to do but as it is you try and try. You need strategy. It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level. 200 level. By 300 level you started moving back. Because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty. To show you. Strategy 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 please pray for your ministry sister you don't need all the money you think you need what you need is a strategy from the spirit believe me you have tried every idea you know you have tried everything they have told you why don't you cry before God come on now pray koinonia Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed. But my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? Lord, I've applied for job everywhere. Civil defense, immigration, everywhere. What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit there are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now but fear has stopped them from taking action there are many families you would have finished building your house since not just a bungalow that will kill you there are people seated here if you took the step god told you last year you would have been feeding your family this year fear tonight I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children, fear. Adults, fear. Great men, fear. Macho men, fear. 
intelligent people fear right now africa is afraid nigeria is afraid many people are afraid the dollar is crashing everybody is afraid you don't know what to do right there's fear everywhere when the devil when god tells you get up and build the house this year that house must be built and all you have is hundred thousand and you calculate and you find out that the building will cost seven million and you are laughing you say god don't disgrace me let the people in the village not say i'm stupid take action listen the bible says this sign shall follow not go before you will never see the hand of god till you stand up and move this is somebody's this is a word from god to someone you have refused to move fear you wrote jam nine times you didn't get it god is saying this time you will get it. you say i'm not ready i better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money see that fear are we getting blessed let's look at two scriptures second timothy 1 verse 7 second timothy 1 verse 7 please help us media let's really hurry up we have to hurry up because we have some prayer to do are you seeing the things that are limiting us truly i am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony if nothing changes in your life this year then it's your fault but as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain, by the grace of God, I will do my best. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Put your name there. Just that first clause. One to read. One more time. Praise the Lord. There are many of our loved ones, 45 years, brother are you ready to get out of your father's house i preached a message in 2008 it was a classic come out of your father's house thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone there are some of us 30 35 40 who are still a big liability to our parents at home or oh, god come out to say what i have now is twenty thousand. come out you have prayed you have fasted you have sown seeds you are giving look let me tell you if i am a father my, when my child gets to a certain age, one day, he will just come and say, young man, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing upon you. Go out. Out. That's it. I'm, I'm very serious. See, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year. It's not just to say it's the year of the rain. Stand up and take action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change, change what you have been doing. Kill fear. Take action and die doing it. Queen Esther, God took her to the palace. God removed Vashti and brought her for the salvation of Israel. But when Mordecai spoke to her, her man is plotting against these people. You better go and meet the king. She said, ah, please, oh, me too. It's, it's, it's brick. They brought me here. Please, I'm not ready to face any embarrassment. And Mordecai said, sit down there in fear. Paraphrasing sit down there when they finish with us the jews they will now say all of you in this palace bring your bio data and they will find out you are a jew too and they will kill you and she said if i perish i perish this is the year some of us are going to say if i i'm writing that jam again is god speaking to somebody i'm writing that jam again this is the year but I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how do you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I was going to get married. The best even did introduction. Later he called and he said, he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise, you'll sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? More people die. There are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry. Is that true? What you are afraid of has not happened, but you are, you are almost dying. From today now, people have started running out of Zaria. You can go if you want to go. What I, 
Of course, I'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around. But, but oh, come on now. People fear everything. You are sleeping in the night. You just light. Maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way. Say, I, I don't like the way this cloth is. Why is it tilting and coming back? Who is there? <laughs> fear. Fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no. And they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself. Fear. One of my friend's father, listen, true story. One of my friend's father, they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in Nigeria. When God gave him that idea, it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Right? The idea came and he laughed. Thai water, haba. Who will pay for water? Are we idiots? There is stream. There is sun. There's light. There's stove to warm water. And he refused to take action. And certain people took action. Do you think those who took the action are, are crying now? This year, you must take a handkerchief as you are crying the movie. Are you getting my point? You must challenge that devil. You have not broken through certain barriers. Nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family. Now you finish secondary school, for instance, and you're about to take that step, and, and everybody said, just, you have tried. You got diploma in, in, in software application. Are you not okay? You are ahead. Yet, every time you sleep, you see a PhD, and the devil is telling you, you cannot move. Tonight, we have come to call that devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I will take action. Say, I will take action. That's right. The second thing, that stops action is laziness. Everybody say laziness. My goodness, our time is gone. Laziness. Very important. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4, please. Proverbs 10 verse 4. And then later on we would look at Proverbs 22 verse 13. Media, please don't forget. Proverbs 10 verse 4. There are some of us, the demon that needs to fly out of our life today. Not jump out, fly out and never return. Is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward? Some of us sheer laziness. The Bible says he becometh poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy. I have zero tolerance for lazy people. A young man of 30 years by 11 30, 12, he's still snoring on the bed. You will beg for bread for sure. There is no amount of fasting that will change that if we don't change it. There are many lazy people. We like a wolf. Free things. Look, let me tell you. There is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year. Are we getting blessed? He become a poor that deals with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent does what? There are some of you, you are experts at begging. Day and night, you beg everybody. Right? Please, bros, I beg. You get 5K. Help me. Next time, sister, sorry, I'm just knowing you. Don't be embarrassed. I need 2K. You, you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness. There are grasses in people's houses to go and weed. There are things to do. But you get up and believe you're a big boy. Big boy with nothing in your pocket. You calm down. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? You must reject laziness. There are some students. You see how some students live. You think, you think that they are professors. Right? 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap he will turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh? dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry? Tall, dark, and handsome. He must be a millionaire. You think God doesn't have sense? 
He said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows. There are many people. See, look, let me tell you. Sometimes you may see me, you see some of the things we are doing, and you just don't be deceived by this, this ever water. If you want it, come and carry it. There is, there is more than this. Are you getting my point? First thing tomorrow morning, we are leaving for Katsina. It takes work. It's not just anointing. It takes diligence. Please, you need to talk to yourself and say, this year, the spirit of laziness, I curse you out of my life. Curse you out of my life. An assignment you can do now. You sit down and say, I will do it on Wednesday. You get zero. Right? Another assignment, you get zero. They just, they, they solve the question in class. They say, just copy it and get 10 marks. Say, I will do it later on. Look, procrastination, you must attack it this year. Hallelujah. You are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here. It's no guarantee to be lazy. I will fire you. I employ you. You are not doing what I employ. In the name of Jesus, I will fire you. And you will come back and you will hear me preach. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is truly no food for a lazy man. Let me tell you the truth. You must get up and, and be serious about your destiny and work. There are some of us this year, you have no business with relationship. If you are passing and you see any beautiful lady, just say, blood of Jesus, and pass. Because this year is a year to you. Your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up. No responsible parent will give her daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. But I believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service, it's going to be a very fast walk. For me, I think this, this is it happening to you. If, if we close right now, I believe that you would have left with something. Many of us here belong to this category, this laziness category, right? Because social media, Facebook, Twitter, has and, and, and BBM has massaged our life of laziness. Something you can get up and do. You see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other. You are taking a bike. Huh? Laziness. It's not like you are in a hurry for anything. Just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon. You are not working. You are not doing anything. You are a liability to everybody around you. And you are just, you are, you are sending Yarrow boys as a student, for instance, to go and buy you Mr. Biggs. Four, five thousand. They bring everything. You lie down with phone that you forced out of your father or mother. And you are making calls in the daytime. Even a worker is not doing that. You ping your life out. and The person you are pinging is in the office making money. You are there struggling. The day you call him, he stops responding to you. Please don't be a liability to anybody this year. Whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest. Rise up and begin to be hardworking and you will become friends again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Especially for the brothers. Brothers, say amen. amen. Let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying. This year, please, please, something must change. There are some people sir five years six years no job not because they they have never taken their cv anywhere um, but my uncle said it now that uncle said he's wicked you came to stay in your friend's house when you stayed in his house he was a student he graduated served and is working you are still staying in his house he has gotten a job you are still staying in his house whoever that friend is drive that person after miracle service, tell him in the name of Jesus Christ, I appreciate you. Three years is enough time for you to sit down. Get Koinonia messages 2012, 13, 14. It will liberate you. Please, out of my house. Sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough. Over pampering destroys. Hallelujah. Over pampering destroys. There are times you need to get up and challenge yourself. They send you money in two weeks. You already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur 
huh? and you are not doing anything. You've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself. You see a seminar, you reject it. You are not watching anything on YouTube. You are not going to sit and learn under people. You are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense. That's what a lot of young people are doing around. Huh? God blesses you with 50,000 that can start something that can bless you. You use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies. They are not even seeing the point. You must change this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear and laziness. We are going to pray. Three serious prayer points. The moment we pray these three prayer points, the night will start with the sick people. We we'll start ministering to the sick people. As soon as we pray, the three prayer points, please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister. Those outside, can you shout hallelujah? One more time, shout hallelujah. The Lord will visit you in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Success is not automatic. There are laws. There are laws. This is our year of the rain. God has spoken to us. Shown us the loopholes. Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your hands inside and outside. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this word. It has come to clean me up. It has come to purify me. It has come to challenge me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you believe it. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace. To align my mindset to that of the word of God. Every thinking pattern. Every thought process that is not of God. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, give me the mindset of victory. I'm tired of carrying ideologies. Some of us have ideologies about church. We have ideologies about praying in tongues. Ideologies about the Holy Spirit. Ideologies about prosperity. Ideologies about miracles. Ideologies about responsibility. About marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of God. The first miracle tonight is to pray. I submit my mentality. I submit my thought pattern. Please pray. Pray from your heart. I refuse to be limited. There is still a place for champions in life. There is still a place for the great. But you can never rise above your thought pattern. You can never rise above your ideology. You may have held on to it for years. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to re-examine your mindset. Let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. The mindset of victory. I don't see defeat in my life. I don't see defeat with God. I am unlimited. With God, I am unbeatable. With God, I am a champion. Ay, 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 ay. Pray. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For though I fall, yet I will rise again. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to challenge that spirit of laziness. Are you getting my point? Fear and laziness. Let's combine it together. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I challenge every spirit of fear. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Therefore, I declare that fear is banished from my life. I refuse to fear and I challenge laziness. From today, I receive the grace to be diligent. No more laziness. It's time to take action. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Time to take action. 2015. Time to take financial steps. 2015. Time to take spiritual steps. 2015. Time to take intellectual steps. Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God mighty way. That's right. As we pray this very prayer point, the healing power of God will begin to move. Hallelujah. I'm going to request those who are sick, those who came specifically for healings, you will find your way as, hold on, let's pray first before you come. I'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, say in the name of Jesus, Oh God, reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing. Reveal to me the strategy in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny helpers. Show me the strategy for the church growth. Show me the strategy for the expansion of my business. Show me the strategy for five points. Show me strategy for first class. Show me the strategy to pass the jam. Show me the strategy. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny. Show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny. Pray. Show me the strategy. Abra take a lekete, 
Oh yes, the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We're going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here. Very quickly. If you came here for the miracle service for healing, please come and line up. Ushers, help them, coordinate them. Let's have it very quickly. While that is happening, make sure you write your request. There is a mystery of answered prayer in this house. Make sure, please. If you have not written your prayer request, start writing it. I don't care what the situation is. I'd like you to write it and let's drop it before God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh mighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Those of you in front, I know you came here because of the testimonies you have had. I want you to know that your situation will not be different. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to believe in the power of God. There are certain conditions, listen to me, there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic. Hallelujah. It's going to be a fast one. I don't know if we'll have time to take testimonies or not, but because there, I, I really, I really, really need to rush with time and let's do a lot please if we end late today i apologize in advance we'll do our best to kill time but please wait because god has something to do in your life hallelujah praise the lord father we give you praise it's called a miracle service we thank you for the anointing of the spirit in the name of jesus everybody make sure you participate now if there if you have loved ones who are sick you can connect. You can tell them to connect. Praise the Lord. You don't need to come out for them, but you can call them or do whatever and tell them, look, connect to what God is doing. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Worship team, help us. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you all the praise and we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now in Jesus' name. Go ahead, please. Who brought this lady? Who brought this lady? Who came with her, please? If you brought somebody, let's know. Please, we are not faking it here. What's, what's wrong with her legs? Who brought her? My dear, look at me. What's wrong with your leg? Huh? You what? There is a wound in my leg. My leg is swollen. Your leg is swollen. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing a charm. Look at me. What, what did you say? You sat in what? I woke up. You woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I can walk. Okay, look at I me. I keep coming out. Look at pause. me. It's coming out with pause. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. 
Just look at me. Don't look at the legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ this night I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus my dear it never returns to you again and this veil that I see over you in the spirit I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ give God praise help us worship him please let's hurry No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Say that I have been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? He's hearing okay. what I'm Bless you, Daddy. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Mm. Sir, what, what are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The belly was swelling. I'm going to pray for you right now. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus. The heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um, would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay, just, just try. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely in the name of Jesus Christ. As I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just goes lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I curse this power. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. 
I curse that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Climb by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it which of the hands can she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Mama is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come. I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I cause, Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I cause that spirit. You are a sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from this act of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage and let Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change in Jesus' name. My God is Father, careful. Although there is an iron in your leg, in the name of Jesus, may there be a miracle. I command this shorter leg to grow out now by the Spirit of God. Madam, look at me. Do you want to try walking? Uh -uh. I'm not asking you. What you, have. you came here because you believe God can help you. Is that true? You believe that? Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? Your sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? 
you feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to. But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree that as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains. Um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward. In the name of Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God Such an awesome God oh. Hallelujah Please rise up everybody Rise up everybody Shiva la 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 We are going to cause every wicked power Please listen Hallelujah Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen, every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that, it is on the strength of that. The Bible says, although he has put all things under his feet, he said we do not yet know. I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that. Um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there, let me tell you something. The people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do. Are you following me now? There are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night and right now, my goodness, there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three. It's not just a recitation. You're going to shout that name. The name that paid access for your liberty. Bring up, bring them out. My goodness. 
deliverance is already happening inside and outside there will be mighty angels there is the sword of the spirit lord let there be deliverance every family every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage i invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three those devils are under fire one two three come out now i command powers be gone now i cause principalities i cause spirits i cause powers inside outside the angel of the lord is moving i command witchcraft bring them out spirits of ancestry in the name of jesus the powers that have tied down man's destinies the forces that have refused to let you go right now i come with an apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names let fire fall from heaven over your life over your academics over your marriage through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves lift your hands was he shouting one more time please bring them listen for some of you what will happen right now is not just for you alone but for your family just keep them down there hallelujah Malakata. And I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied. Makoto Tobakata Sheketelekaya. As you shout that name, Jesus, you may not even know that that thing is in your family. But all of a sudden, physical fire, physical fire will begin to burn. Right now, on the count of three, I challenge those powers. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. I cause that spirit. Delay, delay. I cause that spirit inside and outside. I command that devil of delay to go now. I command that power tying your destiny i command that power tying your breakthrough i command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of Jesus, I release marriages. I release miracles. I command breakthrough. Makatete teleba. Fire is burning. I command breakthrough. I set those altars on fire. I set those covens on fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Where are those who have been oppressed academically? Lord, where are they? There are people who would have moved forward. As I speak right now, fire is coming on people. Fire is coming. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. 2015, the year of the rain. I command those powers. I challenge them. They must leave. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years 10 solid years but as i prophesy right now 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I command that family to be released now I command that family to be released now ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I command that family to be released now hallelujah in the name that is above all names I pray and I prophesy the Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied and, and see when your hands are tied it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there lift your hands some of you will feel physical fire physical fire on your hands there are chains burning lord where are they let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression right now as i speak anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit i command those hands to be loose now i command those hands to be loose now the fire is falling 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 inside and outside falling i break the chain my goodness there are angels outside the fire is falling chains of delay hallelujah hallelujah in one minute lift up the exact situation you want god to change begin to talk to him go ahead before prophecy comes please don't keep quiet no matter how impossible it is there is an anointing inside and outside make sure you are talking to the lord this and that and that are my requests do a miracle some of you need a 24 hour miracle now all those here in front in the name of jesus and by the fire of the holy spirit at the count of three not only will those devils leave they must release your family members i speak to every spirit you know my voice i represent the embassy of heaven and in the name of jesus at the count of three you will leave now one two three go 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 never to return never to return never to return never to return go go hallelujah stretch your hands towards this request your requests are there please in case you've not dropped yours locate it quickly to the ushers it's not a ritual there is a mystery of answered prayer hallelujah the bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before god the threats may be joblessness it may be impossible situations as i kneel upon this request and we pray together just for one or two minutes see i assure you i assure you you will return with a testimony except you refuse to come and testify stretch your hands and begin to pray thank you jesus
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I'd like you to receive every prophetic word. Every prophetic word. I don't care whatever it is that you came here with. Remember last week we taught that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of Jesus Christ in this year of the rain I command that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs By the agency of the spirit we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of jesus the laws of favor the laws of destiny help us in the name of jesus i pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's phd right now in this year of the rain i command speed for you i declare move forward now move forward now make progress now move forward now in the name of jesus i pray for anything that has died in your hands business the works of your hands relationships in the name that is above all names let resurrection happen in your life now please believe what i'm saying believe what i'm saying god is changing people's situations this is how god changes situations by the power of his prophetic word i say it again whatever has died i speak to that which was dead Come back to life now. I command every blood condition, whoever is standing here and you are SS, right now we change that genotype to AA. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of Jesus. We cause HIV. You leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits, you sleep in the night and they oppress you. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring deliverance to you now. Ay, ay, ay. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring deliverance to you now. There are people here, it works for others until it gets to your turn. Then it fails right now in the name of Jesus. I command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life the power of god is moving on this world moving strong on this world the last time it happened the mystery behind that tragedy i cause it in the name of jesus i declare that in this january between now and next month's miracle service what you could not do in the whole of 2014 may my god empower your hand to do it in the name of jesus christ i pray for every dying cgpa here hear the word of the lord in the name of jesus 
I command it to come alive. There are people here, students, your true status is first class. But something has tied you down. Your true status is four points. But something has tied, whatever that something is, I lift it off your life now. In this year, 2015, go back to your departments and break barriers. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every business here. Whatever has stopped it from working, in the name of Jesus, we command it to come alive now. Whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you, I call them forth now. I call them forth now. I declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they said there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of jesus christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of jesus May the Lord compel them to respond. In the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. Whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life, every worry, everything that has robbed you, I command fresh impartation of prayer grace. Receive it now. Fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and i pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of god that has robbed you of your christian integrity you love God, but you find things pushing you that embarrass you. Right now, I agree with you. Be delivered now. I agree with you. Be delivered now. Hallelujah. Pray. By the mystery of the blood, I open that door of gate of, of death and I command in the name of Jesus that your soul is ransomed from the gates of death in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of Jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of Jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus, I establish the covenant of peace upon your life. You are protected by the angels of heaven. I declare right now that in 2015, living from hand to mouth, that spirit of begging, living from hand to mouth, by the mystery of divine supply, I bail you out of that wicked situation. name of Jesus I pray for you whatever you wrote here as a request right now I agree with you that it is turned into a testimony I say it one more time whatever you wrote here as a request I agree with you we turn it into a testimony by the power that turned the rod of Moses into a serpent I'm back into a rod. I turn what was here as a tell as a prayer request by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it become a testimony in your hands. In the name of Jesus, every factor that must be in place for you to stand here and testify, I release it in the name of Jesus. I pray. We pray for our lecturers. 
every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of Jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved I'm speaking any position that belongs to any God fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 I prophesy it from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the Lord thank you Jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus you've never made him Lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to Christ remember we said the basis for your victory is what Jesus Christ has done wherever you are or you have once given your life to Christ but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right don't say time is gone please wherever you are inside or outside you might be a new student you've been a Christian all your life or you may be new in this town I pray right now that you respond to the call of God wherever you are you are returning to Jesus or you are making decisions for the first time please make your way to the front be bold about it be bold about it I know God is talking to somebody don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person find your way to the front God bless you God bless you please make sure you celebrate them as they come celebrate them God bless you those outside no matter how far you are make your way to the front Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and look at her. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.